Hello, it's Sarah. I have a couple things today for you guys, which is exciting because, oops, sorry, I've been in the craft room but um, haven't been filming. And today I want to do um, a Glowforge tutorial, just a, sh a quick little overview of what I use it for. Kirby wants me. Come on up, Kirby. Come on. Here she is. Look, this is my doggie. This is Kirby's back of her head. Look, she's licking my. Okay, forget it. Anyway, um, I have been working on trying to create my own patterns, you know. So this was something that I made with the Glowforge because you can go into the program and just pick shapes sometimes. So I'm going to show you that, how I, it's the simplest way because I use the Glowforge um, uh, program. Like not, I don't use ink space or any of like the silhouette. You can use any of the like art creating <clears throat> software and I'm not familiar with it so I don't know how to do it so I really do the most basic thing so I use the Glowforge's home home page basically right I'll show you what I'm talking about I'm not using the right words Joe my husband Joe is getting more and more familiar with ink space so he's able to do create his own artwork and stuff like that but for me right now all I need is shapes right so I'm able to just go to the machine like I'm about to cut um, a sugar skull that this, this is MDF, which is like, it's a uh, composite material, but I can paint on this just fine. But if I want to do wood burning, I need to do it on, um, I like to use Baltic birch, so I ordered some sheets of it. Now you can only fit a sheet about like 12 by, I don't know. 20 like I should know this stuff look I'm a beginner um anyway so we ordered it from my vendor that I got my uh, rounds from uh, woodpecker crafts in New Jersey and then I can cut pieces that I can burn on so this is a hamsa hand the same thing I did on this with paint I just did on this in wood burning so i um, gonna Go ahead and get my computer out, and I'm going to have to switch the camera. So I'm going to take the camera off the tripod here and put it on a one, a forward-facing one so I can show you my computer. I don't know how people do that on YouTube where they're, like, really good at showing their computer and stuff. So I'm hoping this turns out okay, and I'll show you how I cut things for myself to work on in my craft room. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm in the kitchen. And this is what I was talking about. It's a sheet of wood that's about 24 by 12. Okay, it's uh, what, I, what I like to burn on. Before I do that though, put it in the machine, I have to put this tape on it, which it's not the best tape. This is, let's see if it has any information on it. Because I wouldn't recommend it. It comes off like it's not sticky enough this is more like maybe a post-it strength stickiness, but anyway, let's go this way. What I do is I take this tape and put it on the wood. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Like so. Really get it stuck on there. And then this will be ready, whoopsie, to put in the Glowforge because now when I'm cutting the MDF and I know that I'm not going to be burning, wood burning it, <clears throat> I don't need to take this step because the marks that the machine makes on the wood, I'm just gonna paint right over those. So now this is ready to go into the machine and I'm gonna be right back and I'll be at the machine. All right, so this is the Glowforge that I have. The Glowforge Plus, all right? It's like a big cricket, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's really big. Anyway, so I've already put a piece of wood in there and the machine has recognized it. 
it's on. There's an on off button in the back. And when I get on my computer, it'll see this work in here because there's a camera inside here and it can identify the actually wood and the, the Glowforge has wood that has a, um, a skew on it and everything so it recognizes the skew. See this tape is already coming off but I'll put my sugar skull right here and it'll be fine. So see look this is all like scrap look and see the tape just comes right off. So once I've cut but what it does is it takes that burn and then when you it doesn't show up on the wood because it's cut with a laser so I'm gonna stop making it you close this up and now I'm gonna go in back to the computer and I'll program it and tell it what to do and then I'm gonna have to come back this will be beeping this will be lit oh dear excuse me this will be lit up and I push it and then I'm on my way so I'll show you how that works I'll be right back all right so this is my laptop and we're going to go into the Glowforge and see what's going on. All right, so this is our dashboard. This is all our files and of stuff we've made already. And um, so for me, <laughs> this is the easiest. See, here's the sugar skull. Here's my Hamsa hand. So I can just go right into that file because if we're creating something new and Joe's downloading it, like I don't even know how he does it. See, here's one of the lizards. Here's another lizard. Like this is all the stuff we've played around with. The ornaments, I made those right here. All right, so let me just go. I'm going to click on the sugar skull. And the last time I cut, I cut three of them. So they're over here. Here's where the, I start. I have to put in the kind of wood it is. And this is going to be medium basswood plywood, I'm pretty sure. Um, yes. If it was something else, like, see, they have we have MDF, medium draft board. That's what the MDF is. We've used acrylic and uh, walnut, red oak. So you just have to tell the machine what it's cutting because then it knows how hot to make it, how slow or fast to go. Um, like to get the, the right cut so um, for right now I'm gonna go with medium basswood so now it knows what kind of wood I'm gonna move this guy out of the picture and actually I think I'll cut two because there's always a chance I'll need to and so I'm just gonna move these into position see it's not showing me the exact picture that I thought it was gonna show me of, okay there it is see now it looks like wood I don't know if you can see this at all I'm just gonna go up a little bit but so I just place it where I want it on the wood see this is actually the wood and I go over to here and I say cut cut and this I just want to ignore because I don't want three artwork in this step will be ignored Oh, okay. So I only want to cut two because this one I just pushed out of the way. I could delete it. You know what? I'll just delete it. Delete. Get rid of it. Okay. So this is not ignore. This is cut. So proof grade. I don't know what any of that means. These are custom things. Like when we've gotten um, Home Depot wood and stuff like that, we've cut on the um, eraser board. But right now we're good with basswood, plywood, cut, cut and I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna push print, which is over here. And then it'll get ready to, uh, it'll tell me how long it's gonna take. And then I'll show you. It should only take like two or three minutes. I can hear it moving in the other room. I don't know why there's a shadow like that, it's so weird. But we're looking over here. We're waiting, it says preparing to print. It's auto-focusing my material, it says. Oh. Calculating precision movement. You're in the fast lane. Your, pre your print is being processed on the most powerful. Oh. A minute and 47 seconds it's going to take. It says, magic time. Push the button on your Glowforge to begin. Yeah. Kirby's, all right, I'm going to push. I'm going to turn it off, and we're going to go watch it. Ready? All right, you see that button blinking? 
That means push the button. So I'm about to push it. So it is a little loud. Hopefully you can hear me. We have it vented out into the garage. So you see this back here? It's cut through the wall and it goes out into the garage and you can kind of, I don't know if you can see it, but there's smoke. You see the smoke? Because it's burning the wood. So it vents that out into the garage and the garage is open so that it doesn't get all stinky in there like smoke. But there is one sugar skull. myself something to work on. Isn't that awesome? So for me, this is all I'm doing right now with it. People do a lot of cool stuff with this thing though because it etches and it engraves and it, 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 can, it can put things on your um, Apple watch band and everything. So I haven't really gotten too far advanced with it. But, uh, yeah, so you can see the smoke. It's like watching paint dry, I guess. <laughs> it's like singing. So it's all done. You just open up the top. Um, I'm gonna use this again, but I'll take it out for now. And depending on how inchy, but look how the tape just comes right off because it's not that sticky. But I have something I can burn now. So I am going to wood burn these. The tape just comes right off, so kind of convenient and kind of not but see how the burn got on the tape instead of on the piece so that my my friends is ready to be burned all right um that's it you guys thanks for watching okay i'm back i just wanted to share one more thing so i want to print a hamsa hand but i want it to be bigger so let's go back to the dashboard and I'm going to grab my Hamsa hands, which there they are. I mean, I, I know what they are, but I'm going to open that and then see, it can already see the wood through it because I just printed those two um, or cut those two sugar skulls. Now I'm going to delete one because I only want to, um, yeah, I only want one. As long as I leave one on here, I don't screw it up. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. So. This Hamsa hand is, if I go over here to this little, um, let's see if you can see it. It's a ruler right down there. I click on the ruler and it tells me how big it is. It's six and seven, eight, seven inches by five and whatever, whatever, right? So I wanna make a bigger one. I wanna redo this one and burn it. See, I, I know, I'm, but I want it in a bigger size. So this one I think is seven, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half. I'm going to go up to, oh, sugar daddies. Sorry. Oh, my God. I'm such a klutz. Um, I have this bigger one right here. This one that I did first, so you can kind of see the difference. But I think I just want a little bit bigger. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. So I'm going to go back to my... Oh boy, I lost it. Oh, I gotta click on this. See what a klutz I am? Okay, so I wanna go up, I wanna make this seven. So just go back, oh no wait, go this way, back. And see, and then, and then hit enter and see what happens. It probably changed the proportion, but what happens if this little button right here is, oh Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Um, 
it's connected. Like if I unclick that, it separates them so I can customize it. Listen, I'm not an expert, but all I know is if it is clicked, it's locked right now. Then it stays in proportion. It keeps the width and the height connected so that it stays proportionate. So I think I might even want to go bigger because I can go, I have plenty of wood here, so I'm going to make this an eight. Oh wait, oh boy, oh god. Um, wait a minute, see this is what I screwed up and I just want to push like undo. I don't know how though. Um, oh boy. Oh wait, I know how, I know how. Right here, this little arrow, I think I'm getting a delivery. Undo, oh jeez. Oh geez. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I figured it out. It's this arrow. <laughs> it says it right under it. You, you hold the cursor over it and it says undo. So I clicked undo and my hamster hand came back. And I'm here and I'm going to just try to do this right. So backspace, why won't you? Okay, and put an eight. Okay, good. And then click enter. Okay, and it got bigger. All right, cool. Now I just need to reposition it and make sure it's on there. And I am going to cut this. So I'm ready to go. But, but first I have to pick my wood. It's still medium basswood plywood. Click that. And then everything's ready. And then I just go to print. And the same thing will happen. It should take like a minute. And I will get a bigger hamsa hand. We just got an Amazon delivery. We have... You are really getting on my nerves. Ginny, my son's dog, was an apartment dog, and she's not used to having all of this action happening all the time. So it says, preparing my print. But it literally takes like five minutes, and I'm working, oh, a minute and 17 seconds. So I'm going to go push the button, and I'll be right back. Ta-da! So now I basically have this jumbo that I cannot wait to do. It, I mean, it still makes marks on the back a little bit, but, like, I don't mind. Like, this is mine, and, like, see, you can still see, like, the little burn marks on the back, but I don't mind. Um, I guess I could tape both sides, and I think the wood that you get from Glowforge tapes both sides, so it's, like, really protected. Um, let me see this one. Yeah, see, see all these? This is just, I don't know what it's from, but it's a laser beam, so it comes under there. Um, and this was one of my thicker, like, quarter-inch wood that I got. So, yeah, but now I have this guy, so I have three different sizes. So that's the thing. I can always, and then I've even made smaller ones, see? Okay? Kirby. Joe, Kirby keeps, oh, no, wait, this one. Kirby keeps coming to me because she has her collar on. She's like sitting on me. So see, I got another one of them. Yes. Oh, all right. Anyway, so there's there's that. All right, you guys, I'll be back. Thanks for watching.